Right guys, we finally know where the Chain Jesu and the Murnaham are. They're at Procyon. Uh, Mel Norme finally told us. Um, took us a while. Now we can talk to the main leaders of the Old Alliance. Try and probably get some, some good information off them. Uh, apparently we can talk to them if we use our Hive Space um, thingamajiggy. Uh, it's probably, probably don't want to use it here actually. We probably want to use it... Um, around the orbit of the thing. But first of all, let's go to the star base. Uh, oh, what the hell? The interior of the star base is completely abandoned. Yoquan put the star base in orbit around this world after it, after defeating the Chenjutsu and Murnaham. The Chenjutsu and Murnaham on this star base set up mindless robots to run the station. I then got back to the surface of the planet. How the hell did they do that? That's weird. So these guys must be pretty advanced then. Obviously they're like, uh... They were definitely cleverer than the uh, Urquan anyway. They were exploring synthesis schemes. To make a hybrid race. Ah, this is this is what we were talking about, wasn't it? That's what they were talking about. Being able to destroy the Urquan on their own. Right, let's go and see how they're doing. So hopefully we can just... Maybe use the hyperwave caster right next to them here, or do we have to go into the actual orbit? Yeah, I think we may have to go into the actual orbit of the planet, like properly go into the planet. And now here, if we go into our manifest, we should be able to use the uh, hyperwave caster. Let's see what happens. Here they are. are the Chenjesu. We are the Murnham. We do not understand how you have penetrated the slave shield or why. But in doing so, you have interrupted the process. Explain this intrusion. Well, I guess I'd be a little bit annoyed if I was halfway uh, into sort of synthesizing with another race. Um, let's talk to them. We're struggling. We of any assistance now. We are in the middle of the process. I will explain. After we, Chen Jesu, and Murkler were defeated by the Urquan, we chose to be encased in a single slave shield on this world. As soon as the Urquad departed, we began the process. We initiated a synthesis of our two species, our two cultures, one crystalline, the other purely mechanical. This process, fueled only by the radiant energy of our sun, will eventually produce a new hybrid race and when the process is complete, we will crack the Urquan slave shield and emerge from our chrysalis like a winged insect unleashed from its cocoon. Then we will be ready and capable to deal with the Urquan, their battle thralls, and their dreaded Samatra. Are you kidding me? Can't you just help us now? Give us a little bit of information, some tips, how to destroy the Urquan, or maybe how to free you? That'd be pretty helpful. Uh, let's ask them why they we can't they can't just give us some help information the anything. Synthetic hybridization of the Chen Jesu and the Murnham species will require approximately 35 of your what? Years. This extended duration is necessary because our synthesis mechanisms are dependent exclusively on the light of our sun for energy. Okay, well, 35 years, I'm not waiting for that long, uh, even with the time in this game going reasonably quickly. That's a long time, that's like, what is that? 2192? No, I'm not waiting till then. Surely we can speed this up. Theoretically possible, but it would pose a great danger to us. The process must be executed as planned, or it may fail catastrophically. We would be destroyed. Well, if the Korra are going to win the doctrinal conflict to destroy all of the planets, then it's probably worth the risk. And also, the Shufix, he did say that they saw something putting out a huge amount of light near Micon Space, so we're definitely going to have to go and check out what's going on over there. Though your ship's design is unfamiliar to us, we now understand that you are of human origin, and so we will share with you our reasons for accepting the status of Urquan Slave. In 2135, our great alliance burned within the crucible of sentience. Though our fleets of armed starships held back the hierarchy's grotesque armada for many years, in the end, 
The Urk One unleashed a power upon us that was so overwhelming. We knew we would be annihilated if we did not submit. This unstoppable power, this ultimate weapon, was a huge starship, an unstoppable battle platform built by the precursors in the ancient past. Your vessel shares some similarities in design to the Urquan's battle platform, which they call Samatra, meaning Great Trophy. The Samatra was many times larger than your ship, and bore weapons and defensive systems that made it invulnerable to all of our technologies. It remains a mystery to us why the Urquan fought us for so long without using the Samatra. But when they finally brought the ship into combat, the Samatra incinerated our finest brood home vessels from ten times our own ship's weapon range. We had no choices beyond submission or devastation. Before the Urquan arrived to accept our surrender, we sent one last message to your people. A message suggesting that your species do as we Chenjesu and Murderm plan to do. We would accept the Urquan's demands and become slaves until such a time as we found a way to destroy or neutralize the Samatra. Well, that is brilliant, isn't it? We now have to face a massive super battle platform as well as all of the Urquan. Uh, yeah, we're going to need some advice from you guys. Well, the main thing is, how do we defeat the Urquan? I think that's the main question here. You must find some way to destroy the Samatra. To do this, you will need a powerful weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. But that is not all. You will also require some way to distract the Urquan to give you the opportunity to use the weapon. Ah, well, we have a Dinyari, so that would be useful. Uh, what do they think? Do they think this could could be a chance to sort of distract the Urquan? We also need the bomb as well, but this is a step forward. Um, is it Mr. Chenjesu, man? We know the Dinyari only from legend, where they are described as the embodiment of evil and cruelty. If ever there was a devil, Captain, it was the Dinyari. However, if in fact the creature you possess is one of this ancient breed, its mental power may be useful to help confuse the Urquan. Okay, so that's all they have uh, in terms of help. Here is a painful intrusion. We will always provide advice whenever you request it, Captain. Okay. Goodbye, Chenjesu. See you later. Goodbye, once and future ally, human. When the process is complete, and we emerge from our chrysalis, I shall tell your grandchildren of our conversation this day. Well, there we are. That was the Chen Jesu and the Murnaham. So, uh, they think, I think they think that the Dinyari is going to be crucial in uh, defeating the Urquan. Of course, the Dinyari itself uh, wants to defeat the Urquan, really. Uh, it has, it wants revenge, really against the Urquan, so that's going to be useful, but we do need to find an epic weapon to destroy the Samatra, like a, you know, a massive bomb, which uh, I think the Utwig say they have, uh, so maybe we want to go and start, uh, you know, telling the Utwig that we, we may need the bomb, and uh, we can steal it off them, well maybe not steal it, they're, they're quite powerful I think, uh, we'll, we'll negotiate, get the bomb, destroy the Urquan, simple, uh, maybe not. But for now, I think uh, it's time to look for some Rainbow Worlds, and we'll finish them off. Aha! Here's a Rainbow World. There's a Rainbow World right here. So, Gamma Kepler. It's a site for a Rainbow World. I think we have four left, and this is the uh, the seventh one, then. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's see what happens. Well, nothing will happen. It will just be basically 500 more RUs to us, basically. It's awesome. There we go, just uh, took some radioactive stuff on it. And uh, now we go out again to the wild, the wild hyperspace to look for some more rainbow worlds. Ooh, there's somebody chasing me. Ooh, is that a rainbow world there? I think so. I think I just saw it flash. 
Yeah, there it is. So here we go at uh, Gamma Reticuli. Awesome. Let's go. It's quite hot, this one. All the Rainbow Worlds seem to be really, really close to their sun, and it sometimes makes it a little bit difficult to see. So I don't know if it's like a little uh, a way the game loads in the planets or something, but you know, if it wasn't for that, then I think I'd miss quite a lot of Rainbow Worlds, to be honest. Oh, jeez. A lot of stuff chasing me here. Oh, no! Oh, dear. Okay, I think this may be Urquan, because we're pretty far into Urquan space here. Uh, we could take them down, though. Yeah, here we go. Three Urquan, okay. I think we could do it. There is something wrong here. Something which makes my sheath retract and my talons ooze. I sense the ugliness of a thousand evil thoughts. And I have located the source of these fetid emanations. They come from aboard your vessel. Foolish renegade human, why have you come here? All that you have found is your inevitable punishment. What? A human in a precursor service vehicle. How did you escape the slave shield, human? Or are you a rogue? Yeah, I think they could sense the Dinyari above our, well, above, in our ship. Your independence is too dangerous for us to tolerate. You shall be punished. They really do hate us now, don't they, the Urquan? I mean, we haven't really done anything wrong. They're the ones who keep attacking us. Uh, I guess we are trying to destroy them at the end, but uh, here they go. Oh, that's a good hit. Oh, two hits. Still didn't do a single bit of damage to us. The thing is, we're too quick, and we're also just, we got superior firepower as well. I mean, we got homing, like, super blasters that do each one of those shots. Oh, there we go again, another massive blow. Each one of those shots does the same amount as, like, one of their one fusion blasts. So we're pretty much doing three times as much damage, which is homing, and we've also got about three times as much crew, more than that. Um, there we go, we've just taken down three Urquan in about less than a minute. And we just get like a thousand free RUs, and then we just move on. Um, there we go. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yes. Is that one? Yep, yeah, think so. Alpha Andromedae. Andromedae, I don't know. Um, of course, Andromeda is the, is the real name for the galaxy that's close to us, but Andromedae, I guess it's cool because it's plural for whatever reason. Um, okay, let's go. That is now. What is that? Is that our ninth three in the world? I think it is. We've only got one more after this one. So there we go. There's the penultimate rainbow world. And since we're on nine, we might as well finish them off. Look for the final one. Uh, I've pretty much gone through most of the stars now. There's only a few more in the top right-hand corner of the map near Utwick Space. I need to look for now in Supok Space. And once I've got those, I think we can get back onto the quests that we we're trying to get done here. So here we go. Just moving up this way and. Uh, a few planets. Groombridge, that looks like one that might have a rainbow world, doesn't it? It's quite close up there. Um, yeah. Oh, I knew it as well! There's there's one right here at Groombridge. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that at all. Right up here in the corner. It did look very isolated. I just Something about the name as well, Groombridge. It just sounded a bit... Sort of like an Easter egg almost, but I'm not really sure. Uh, it's a very big star. It's almost... The planet's almost engulfed in, engulfed in the star. This is going to be extremely hot, though. It's a massive white star. And here we go. The tenth rainbow world. The last rainbow world here at Groombridge. Um, gee, look at that. <laughs> 3,500 degrees. Wow. Well, there we go. Ten rainbow worlds. And there we are. We've done it. We've got, just in that session, we've got another 2,000 IUs. We've got all the rainbow worlds. So, finally, the final one at Groombridge. And there we are. It's good. Um, so the Rainbow Worlds, uh, I believe, I've read somewhere, that they point, they make an arrow to the top right-hand corner of the map, and they point to the galactic center, which is apparently where the precursors went. Uh, I don't know if that's actually, like, something something that people actually, like, accept now, or that's just something that someone thought of, I don't know. But either way, it's pretty cool.
And there we go. Let's get back to Earth now, finish off at the Starbase, and uh, just have a quick talk to the Commander, and then we will uh, we'll end off the episode. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. So we're just stuck up on crew here. Um, we don't really need to bother about fuel because we can get it from the Melnorme. So let's talk to the Starbase. Hello, Captain. Commander. Drop off our huge number of More minerals. More fire, eh, Captain? That last load should keep it blazing. Nice. Okay. Oh, let's analyze what we got uh, during this awesome trip that we've, the we've made. reads as follows. Subject, Ultron device. We put this thing through every test we've got and came up with the same results as if we used a fork. Nothing. Zero. Zip. This thing ever functioned, which we doubt, it certainly won't now. Age and physical stress have long since robbed it of whatever mystical powers it might have once had. Summary, in the future, please don't waste our valuable time on junk like the so-called Ultron. That's the end of our scientist report. Yeah, well, we know that's all too, all too false, really. Um, apparently the Ultron is something that we... I don't know whether... Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so is the Ultron... I mean, the, uh, Commander Hayes you can trust normally. Um, is he telling the truth? Is the Ultron useless? Or is the... Are the Utwig... Are the Utwig some sort of race that find the Ultron so amazing? Is it some sort of weird, like... You know... They have some sort of weird love for the Ultron. I don't know. But that's questions we must uh, answer later. For now, I've got to end the episode here. Thank you all for watching. Episode 36. It's taken a little bit of a while. A bit of a pain. Exams and all that guff. But I think we're back on track a little bit. Webb's getting his computer back and it's all awesome. So, see you next time.